Hi, welcome back to Cisco Live Barcelona 2019. I'm here in the Cisco TV studio and I'm joined by Mark Noel. Hi Mark, how Hello. are you? Hello, Anish, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, so you are a distinguished engineer at Cisco. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about what that means. Uh, oh, what does that mean? It, it just <laughs> means uh, I've done a lot of stuff in, in my time at Cisco and uh, had the ability to uh, influence a lot of products and influence a lot of direction in the industry. So helping Cisco guide where it's going to go. And I understand it's great recognition as well, so congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, so talking about high speed optics, um, tell us a little bit more about 400 gig Ethernet. So 400 gig E is, is the next speed of, of Ethernet. It's a big step, it's highly anticipated for all our customers that are running into bandwidth constraint issues that are really looking to speed things up and 400 gig is, is the next step. Um, it's specified and standardized by the IEEE and uh, there's a lot of work that's needed to, uh, to make that happen. Got it, and tell us a bit more about this work. So what is your role in its development? So, so my role is, is obviously helping us uh, guide where we're going to go internally with our products, but with something like 400 gig E, it's a standard that the whole industry interoperates with, and so we have to have various standards, we have to have various specifications, we have to agree across an industry how all the parts are going to work together. So all of our equipment, whether it's Cisco to Cisco or Cisco to anyone else, will it will work and interoperate. And that's a huge amount of effort, a lot of argument, a lot of debate to try and figure out what the best solution is. Mm -hmm. So in terms of some of the technical problems you've had to overcome, you mentioned interoperability there. Is that, is that the yeah, key part there? Yeah, well, there's, there's a lot of problems. Uh, whenever you do something new, you, you have to invent new things to do. So we have to figure out how to make the, uh, the optical signals go faster, go further. We have to get the electrical signals to speed up. Um, and that's, that's a big part of the problem that we uh, have had to overcome as an industry. And then we have to figure out how to package it all together. And that's where there's been a lot of tension in the room, so to speak, on, on how do we sort of package it down into uh, what would be a pluggable form factor that everyone would want to go and use. Got it, and uh, tell us a bit more about the format war. What are your views on this? Right, so, so the format war, or, or the pluggable module war, whatever you want to go call it, um, really it, it came down to a different philosophy on, on how we are going to go and take this technology, this 400 gig technology, package it into a module and use. So the industry has consistently and, and dominantly used a, a module format called a QSFP, and so we've seen it for 40 gig, we've seen it for 100 gig, and, and there's a lot of value in staying in the same format because it's backwards compatible so customers can go, go and plug the slower speed modules into their higher speed equipment. So when 400 gig came along, we were very motivated to try and figure out how to do 400 gig in the same form factor as 100 gig and, and 40 gig, and we figured that out. We called that QSFP double density because it, we had to double the density of the electrical interface. There was an opposing view uh, of, in the world of, well, why don't we just go and create a brand new module that is optimized, make it a little bit easier to build, and, and that exists out there, it's called OSFP, um, and, and it, it, it works, there's, there's nothing wrong with it, it just, you are not able to use it in a backwards compatible way. And, and speaking, I've been here all week, speaking to a lot of customers, this is really resonating with the backwards compatibility, it allows them lots of flexibility, um, and it, it did come with challenges. It came with challenges, how are we going to do this 400 gig in this very challenging form factor, but we've overcome that. We know, we know how to go do that, we can get all the reaches, we can go from copper interfaces all the way up to um, thousand kilometer coherent interfaces all within the same form factor, and right now we're seeing the industry broadly adopt this. Uh, I don't think there's a single switch vendor out there that's not supporting QSFB DD. So Got it, and, and tell us a little bit more about the process of development, so what, how long does it take to do this, and, and what are some of the um, key things that you take into account? Of course, customer feedback and customer needs are always at the heart of Yeah, when we it, start it, this. it takes a long time. 400 gig E is right at the, at the beginning of its production cycle. We're just about to start seeing deployments, but personally I've been working on 400 gig E for probably four or five years. Um, and probably the last two years has been really focused on the actual product implementation, sorting out this, this module form factor issues, um, and, and solving all these really, really hard technical problems. And you know, we, when, we, when we chose to go after the double density approach, we knew that it was a riskier thing to do, but we had confidence in our ability to innovate. We've built a lot of these uh, related products over the years, so we had the confidence that our innovation engine was there and we could go do it. And, and we, we chose you know, the more challenging path and, and I think it's going to be extremely successful. Yeah, it sounds like it's definitely paid yeah, off. Yeah. Great. Um, so looking forward, yeah. what's ahead for 400 gig Oh um, Well, Ethernet? I mean, what's ahead, it's just starting really. <laughs> yeah. um, so we, we're expecting to see uh, very good adoption. Uh, if you go look at some of the market forecasts, 
uh, 400 giggy is probably going to ramp a lot faster than 100 giggy ramps um, when it when it started moving. A large part of that is because uh, initially we only had service provider markets looking at 100 giggy but when it started. Now we have both cloud and service provider markets adopting at the same time. So this ramp is going to be very quick, and so we're anticipating a lot of interest. It's going to go and. You know what's beyond the initial stuff. We're going to be looking to make it more dense, um, and and obviously we'll be starting to think about speeds beyond 400. But right now, I think it's all about maturing up 400, mm -hmm. driving volume, getting costs down. And you mentioned the cloud uh, players there. So yeah. Is there anything specific that they have different in terms of requirements to the service uh, provider? They, well, uh, nowadays no. Right. There's <laughs> uh, in terms of there's a lot of what is. Hopefully, being we're being able to achieve is is come up with a single solution that that meets both, um, and I think as as an industry we we benefit from that economy of scale because we have the the similar needs and and the similar solutions. Then the combined uh, volumes gives everyone everyone what they need, so everyone should be happy. Great, thank you so much for joining us, Mark. Thank you very much, Nish. Um, and viewers, stay with us. We'll be right back after this.